nobody had any idea of the effect that it would have. It touched the spring, a spring which vibrated in the hearts of millions of people in this country. 2,000 signatures in two days. Chris, 88% of Slough people say they support Enoch Powell. 88% Slough people. As Powell's fans besieged his Belgravia home, his 11-year-old daughter Susan kept a diary of events. It was all very exciting as a child. The police were there and in my diary I refer to the... Um, the letters that arrived, and, and we used to have our own Royal Mail van, purely for Daddy, bringing sacks and sacks of letters. And on the Thursday, the 23rd of April, for example, we'd already had 23,000 letters. And the next day, there were 50,000. <laughs> and I remember sitting around the dining room table, along with other friends, just slitting letters. They just piled up, and this was incredible. The great majority of the letters to Paul were in his favor. You know, we've never seen through these since that God knows how long ago it was. Do you remember these yes, things? We must, read through the whole 45. We read through the whole 45, or what was more than that. Don't you remember it was more than that? And then people say that it wasn't a natural thing. And here we have these letters. We all admire you for your great courage. I'm also writing to Mr. Edward Heath. I bet he got a lot. By <laughs> Jove, he'd be getting a lot. I'm certain that the present setback in your political career will have been worthwhile. <laughs> The persistent theme of the letters from all over the country was that Britain was being changed in ways the writers disliked and feared, without any consultation. Read there. Thank God at last someone had outspoken for the whole people of England. For the white people of England. Who gave up their freedom to fight in two world wars to enable their children to live a better life. Did we go through the day and night terror of doodle bugs, incendiary bombs and bombing, so that these hordes of black locusts might come here and buy the homes we have known for years and make our lives unbearable? <laughs> Are you hanging in the park without me? Are they all drinking in the same old place like ghosts? Immigration! No! Repatriation! Yes! Powell had become a hero of the National Front as the only mainstream senior politician to voice sentiments normally confined to the back streets. But the speech aroused fear and anger among blacks and Asians. A schoolboy at the time, later himself to become an MP, recalls the day after the Rivers of Blood speech. I was one of those wide-eyed, grinning pickaninnies that he saw fit to quote in a letter and that was hurtful, of course. For the first time in the country of my birth, and the country of which I'm proud to say I belong, I was shouted at and spat at and abused in the streets for the first time ever the day after that. So, of course, I remember it. We allowed ourselves to become entangled in a network of financial instruments and practices, the full extent of which and the implications of which we simply didn't understand. And we allowed a obsession almost with deregulation, uh, with uh, the market uh, to take over. These are failures, they're failures of governance. And at the end of the day, failures of governance have to be addressed by the citizen, saying to their political leadership, enough is enough, and we want a change. And we want that change to be founded on justice and equality and freedom and respect for the individual's uh, 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 dignity and national sovereignty. So, of course, I remember it. I take it as true, since he says so. 
I accept it as truth. But it only revealed the underlying tensions. But can you see that the language that you quoted in your speech was itself inflammatory and could be used by people who were racialists against black people in this country? What's wrong with racism? Racism is the basis of nationality. It's the basis of his nationality. He says he's black, but he's British, and he feels British. What is his nationality? His nationality is the nationality he feels is the nation he'll fight for. We should look for solutions to uh, the challenges that we face that are rooted in growth and in enterprise. So I think we all of us have a responsibility, whether in, in, in Africa or outside Africa, to make sure that we learn the lessons of our past, the mistakes that have been made, both within Africa and outside. Because the people of Africa have not benefited. They have been preyed upon uh, by people outside Africa who deprive them uh, of fair terms of trade. They have also been preyed upon at times by their own political leadership. Now, the good news is I see that that's changing. A new generation is coming forward which is more uh, accountable. Uh, more countries now are subject to the disciplines of democracy. Also, and importantly, uh, the countries of the developed uh, world the developed uh, economies are themselves at last taking the issue of corruption seriously. Because corruption is a two-way street. There is the corruptor and the corrupted. They work uh, together against the interests uh, of uh, the people of Africa. I think the important thing is that the hypocrisy of an approach that uh, condemns uh, corruption while doing nothing about the corrupter uh, that uh, condemns uh, the uh, uh, transfer uh, of uh, resources uh, away from their intended uh, purposes whilst providing a safe haven for those uh, resources. Uh, one thinks uh, of the previous ex experience uh, of... Uh, Read there. Thank God that there was someone outspoken for the whole people of England. For the white people of England. Who gave up their freedom to fight in two world wars to enable their children to live a better life. Did we go through the day and night terror of doodle bugs, incendiary bombs and bombing, so that these hordes of black locusts might come here and buy the homes we have known for years and make our lives unbearable? Uh, and others. I think that hypocrisy is now revealed for what it is, as hypocrisy. And I think as a result of that, you've seen a tightening up of policy. What is his nationality? His nationality is the nationality he feels is the nation he'll fight for. Or play cricket for. <laughs> I clearly wasn't going to be the cricketer that my headmaster hoped and uh, it emerged very quickly however that uh, I was uh, a talker and he said, uh, Boating, uh, there's a competition, the English speaking union uh, are running this, this competition and you're going in uh, for the local heats. Uh, and I did uh, and we won. But are you saying that because he's black he can't have British nationality? It's not impossible, it is difficult. But when you said that racism is the basis of his nationality, what did you mean by that? Nations are, upon the whole, united by identity with one another. The self-identification of our citizens, and that's normally due to similarities which we regard as racial similarities. My name is Paul, Paul Boating, and I'm chairman of the English Speaking Union. I came uh, to the United Kingdom as a refugee, as a refugee from Ghana, from a political uh, conflict, from a, a coup d'etat in which we'd lost our home, my dad had lost his liberty and we had lost uh, our ability uh, to, uh, uh, to live. And I came 
to this council estate in West Hertfordshire. What uh, the English Speaking Union did for me was to give me confidence that I could be a winner in what was uh, for me a, a, a strange land. Uh, and I never really looked back. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your intelligent reception and for your demonstration of the academic principle of freedom of speech. Any child, and I'm an unrepentant child of the 60s growing up in that time, I mean, Star Trek was where you sort of went to after Doctor Who. You were grown up now as light relief from a sort of O-level orientated life. I was shouted at and spat at and abused for the first time in the country of my birth. I came uh, to the United Kingdom as a refugee, as a refugee from... And the country of which I'm proud to say I belong. Ghana from a political uh, conflict, from a, a coup d'etat in which we'd lost our home. A schoolboy at the time. I was one of those wide-eyed, grinning, picking in it. So, of course, I remember it. I take it as true, since he, since he says so. My dad had lost his liberty and we had lost uh, our ability uh, to, uh, uh, to live. And I came to this council estate in West Hertfordshire for the first time in the country of my birth. For me, uh, a uh, libidinous teenager, it had to be, and also one hungry for black images, because that was a time when you just didn't see black people uh, on television. But there was this striking black woman. Do you know the number of net losses so far for Labour? At the time of us doing this interview, I think the net losses are about 50. Uh, there are actually 125 net losses so far. Well, the last time I looked, we had net losses of 100. Well, Mr Powers officially uh, accepted Conservative candidate. He's been chosen by his Conservative Association. And uh, like all Conservative candidates, I want to see them elected. He won the election. Let me come on to your bit. You say nobody votes against these kind of things without a lot of thought. Shortly before 9-11, you voted against prescribing Al-Qaeda as an organisation. That was a huge mistake on your part, was it not? Have you actually read the legislation we were voting on? I have read the legislation and I've looked at the, the addendums as well. And I've got here. what the legislation brought forward was a whole list of which organ I have here. organisations, some of which... Some people would argue were not terrorist organisations, but dissident organisations. Well, and to say that because okay. I... Uh, to say which, that which ones? Because I've got the list here. Al-Qaeda, Egyptian Islamic Jihad, the Armed Islamic Group, Harakat Mujahideen, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil, uh, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad Group, Islamic Army of Aden, the Abu Nidal organisation, the Kurdish work... Kurdistan Workers' Party. Which of these should not be prescribed? He won the election, but ironically, Powell had helped put him in. The swing to the Tories was higher in Powell's heartland of the West Midlands than anywhere else. But Heath's victory grievously disappointed Powell, who, according to friends, sat with his head in his hands for days. There are situations in which one is foreseeably more advantaged by one's policy lose party losing than by winning. That was one. So you were dejected when the Conservatives won in 1970? It sealed my exile. Because you, you could see that, that Heath in 1970 had become Prime Minister, whereas if the Conservatives had lost in 1970, there was a chance for you Everything becoming party leader. Everything would become fluid again. The cartoonist depicted Powell waiting like a British General de Gaulle in exile at Wolverhampton Les Deux Eglises for the call to lead his nation. My name's Paul, Paul Boiting, um, chair of the Winston Churchill Archive Trust. Welcome to England. Fish and chips in the way, but am I the same?
ठीक हो गया जी चैनल को सबसक्राइब करके तो घंटी का बटन टैन करके दबा के